I was raised in a family where I wasn't loved. Um, had a mom that didn't like me and told me on a regular basis, I can't stand you. I wish I never had you. Why can't you be like somebody else? Why can't you be like the girl next door? Why are you so big? Why are you ugly? Why don't you have this? Why don't you have that? Um, it was hard. I wanted love and couldn't get it. Didn't know where to go for it. I had a dad that I think might have loved me because I got a lot of slaps on the back and I was daddy's girl. Um, my mom had a baby when I was like three and I tried to kill him. Put a pillow over his face. I didn't want him coming into the family because I figured that's where the love was leaving. Held a pillow over his face and I got beat for it. <laughs> Naturally I did, but um, I didn't want him coming in there taking over. And uh, a lot of things started happening then. No affection at, a, at all, at all. I'd get a toy and she'd take it away. Holidays, Christmas, birthday. Um, a lot of times when it would be gift time, she was sure that I got something used and then watch me to see how I reacted when the brothers got all brand new. I could never understand that. I'd say, Mom, why do you do that to me? I do, I, don't you love me? No. Why don't you love me? What am I doing? Am I doing something wrong? Why don't you love me? I think it was the hardest thing growing up without it. I tried to kill myself three times. Thank God I didn't succeed. And at the age of 13, I forced myself, I mean literally forced myself on my mother. I walked up to her and I said, I love you and I'm going to give you a kiss. And she pushed me down. <clears throat> And my father picked me up and beat me and said, never, ever touch your mother like that again. And she, under no circumstances, let me know, girls don't do that. Girls don't kiss, girls don't touch, and they don't cry. In this family, you don't cry. You're not allowed to cry. You've got to be tough. Well, needless to say, I whipped everybody. I wasn't scared of anybody, big or small, and I won every one of them. This is the way I was raised. And my father would tell me, if you don't beat him and whip him, I'm going to beat you with a razor when you get home. <laughs> I was pretty sure not to lose any of them. 14, 15, 16, the really hard years when you needed acceptance, I looked to everybody else for it. I went to a parochial school for a couple years, and in the parochial school they taught me about God, and I went to church, and I sat in that church, and I listened about God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, and Jesus loves you, and I thought, but where are you? <laughs> you're not there when I need you you know I just I want to know where you are why are you making me go through this you know I don't if you're God and if you love me why do I have a mom that hates me and a dad I get a slap on the back from there's a reason God I just I got to have some answers you know and um, I didn't hear any answers I, I, I didn't understand it I just didn't understand and why didn't the church help you know aren't these supposed to be Christians and why do they act like that? I mean, if they had the love of God in them, then why aren't they showing me that love back? Why isn't there an explanation to this? If you love me, God, then why? I wasn't willing to change, but I just wanted to know why. And a lot of things, um, I got into drugs. I got into all kinds of sex, all kinds of drugs, any and every kind of alcohol. Um, if it's there, I'm going to try it. And I found out that when you try something, it's not a try. This is for good. It's not a little taste. I mean, you're tasting it for a reason. There, there's an empty something there that you're filling, trying to fill. One toke of a joint, uh, that didn't do it. I got to have another toke. One shot of heroin, I got to shoot again. Something's not right. At the age of 18, I got engaged to be married to a man that told me he loved me. Um, it, it, awesome relationship. I thought I was in love. I said, this is wonderful. I met him at a bar out of all places. I got a false ID and started going to the bars and honey that's where the action was and that's where I was. You know this people liked me there. I could dance good. They seemed to love me. They all had the problems I had. We'd get together and drink to forget and party to forget and the boyfriend left me and I found out I was pregnant. Uh, my mom found out and got me up out of bed in the middle of the night and my parents uh, poured a bathtub of hot water, gave me some medication, and then they aborted my baby. And it was probably maybe a month later, 
I went to visit the boyfriend and um, told him that I was pregnant and what had happened. There wasn't any instant result, I could say. There's a little bit of hemorrhaging here and there, but I thought, God, why? You, you're doing this to me again. Why are you doing this to me? I don't understand. And at the boyfriend's house on vacation, things started getting good, and the marriage was going to go through, and plans were being made, and I went into the bathroom, and he was gone. And there I lied on the bathroom floor with my baby in parts, laying on the floor. And all I did was scream, God, why? I had something here to love me, and you took it. Why are you doing this to me? You keep doing this over and over, and I can't take this pain anymore. So I took a razor blade and slit my wrist, and I didn't die, thank you, God. I kept thinking of ways that I could kill myself, and knowing in my heart that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to know what life was about. So I went to talk to the minister to explain things to him, and I don't understand why I'm doing this. Where is this power, and where is this God that I've learned about since a child? And I don't feel there's like there's something what's missing and he told me to see a psychiatrist and the boyfriend broke up with me because of the abortion well I ran into some people at the bar again that accepted me I didn't know how to touch um, I couldn't put my hands around somebody in love unless it was a sexual relationship and that started running rampant at the bar everybody was there to love me and there was a motorcycle gang there that accepted me. And they said, Ray, you're okay. We like you. And I fell into that. And it came initiation time. And they told me what I had to do. And I said, I don't think I can do that. But you have to to become part of us. And we love you. And I can look back at it. And I can see the gangs today and what they have to do for acceptance. It's a family. And I watched them set a man on fire at a party. And I was loaded with heroin, and I don't know what all kinds of drugs. And I remember seeing him laying there burning up. And I got up, and I wanted to help. And a guy grabbed me and said, sit down or you're next. And I said, this is love? God, what are you doing to me? Why am I in this again? Where are you? Why aren't you there? I don't understand what I'm going through. It's, it, it was terrible. I, ca I can't keep living like this. I would go into the bathroom and I would call my mom on the phone and hide in there and say, just, I, I need you, mom. I got to have you love me. I need the love. And I would tell her how much I hated her. But inside it wasn't real hate. It was wanting. I needed love. And my father told me when I was 20 years old, I love you and I'm sorry I never told you that. And I just, I couldn't believe it. He put his arm around me and hugged me. But my mother wasn't there to stop it. So... I, why does mom treat me like that? Why the hate? You know, I'm, I'm the only daughter she had. Why do the boys get new when I get used? Why when I try to tell her something she don't want to hear it? Why am I rejected? And he said, that's just the way she is. You have to try to understand. I didn't understand. I wanted love. And I'm reaching out. So I would go into the bathroom and I would take this razor blade and slice up my arms and then show her. It didn't bother her. I used to take jars from the medicine and beat my face until my face would swell. And I remember psychiatrists telling me that I had a mental disorder. I didn't know Jesus could heal. I didn't know Jesus could heal the brokenhearted or I'd have snapped him up right then and there. I just kept living this lifestyle that I knew best. I got a job bartending, so there was an acceptance. Everybody loved me. I had the dirtiest jokes. I had the best jokes. I had that bubbling personality. And then I was to a fifth a day. It, it, I met a man that said he loved me. I married him. I got pregnant, was going to have a baby. I thought, wow, I finally found life, God. I felt I have to get back into church. And my husband denied, I'm not going back into the church. I was in it once in his church, and it's God don't do that much. But there's a, there was a hunger, and I wanted to go back. And I started going by myself, and I was happy I was pregnant. I called my father, and I said, I got some news for you. We went roller skating that night, and I was just on a high. I said, Dad, I'm pregnant. I, can't, I mean, after the abortion, which was something I couldn't talk about, I found out I was pregnant, and I thought, this is life, a husband and a family, and I know he's going to go to church. These are things that we Americans live for. These are things you're supposed to want in life. Somebody loves me. And I told my father that night, I'm pregnant. Yeah, knit the booties, and my mom didn't say a lot, you know, because they're... they're 
there was maybe some hurt, I think because of the joy that I had. And while we were roller skating, my father was just running around the floor in glory. And I was behind him just waving my hands, just happy. And he dropped over dead. I looked down and I said, Here I go again, God. Why are you doing this to me? This is the one that loved me. Now you took him. But I've got a husband and a baby on the way. So that was fine. Two weeks later, my husband got drunk and came in and beat me. And the baby died. And I was in this hospital room, and on the same day, my sister-in-law gave birth to a daughter. I said, God, this isn't funny. I've lost my daughter, and she's had hers. And I remember the nurse coming into the room with this baby saying, Mrs. So-and-so, here's your daughter. And I looked at that baby. And this was my niece, and I said... Mine's the one that died. And the nurse has felt so bad. And I just would scream and shut the door, bang my head against the wall. And I said, this is it. I can't take it anymore. I don't know why you keep doing this to me, God. What are you doing to me? I didn't understand the love of God. He was somebody there for me to blame. So I continued on life. I'm going to do things my way. I left the husband, wanted nothing to do with him. The alcohol ran rapid. Cocaine came into my life. I married the old boyfriend on the rebound, got back into the marijuana. He made me quit drinking, and I thought, this is life. Now I can't have children. They found out seven major operations. They found cancer. They gave me three months to live, and I said, I can't. Uh, now you're going to kill me. Now I don't want to die. I wanted to commit suicide, but now you're going to take my life? Now I don't want to go. You know, I'm only 24. I don't want to die. My mother sent the preacher up to pray for me, and they anointed me. I didn't know what that meant and gave me communion, and I thought, well, I guess this is it. I got three months to live. And I remember getting skinny, and I thought, glory to God, I've never been this tiny. Praise God, you know. That went on. <clears throat> Years the drinking, years the alcohol. I mean, just unlimited, a fifth a day. The last 13 years, I've been born again three years. I didn't realize that 10 years, I slept with a man that gave me my cocaine. And it was an affair, and he was a married man, and he was a big dealer in the town I was from. I couldn't believe that I was on cocaine that long. When it was time, the Lord was dealing with my heart with little things, and, you know, God and religion and the church and, you know, church people, I, I can't fit in with them. I, you know, I don't fit in there because, you see, I have a drink now and then. And those are the people I can relate to. And a lady down the street started talking to my brother and his wife about the Lord. And I said, oh, this woman hangs out at your house all day long. She's Pentecostal, you know, them wild hairdo, weird, I mean, these people are weird people. I, I, oh, I don't want to be around when she's down there. I mean, I'm high sitting there all the time, so I can't, I can't relate to this. And she would just sit there and tell about the love of Jesus, and I thought, yeah, right, <laughs> right. Let me tell you about my life. I'll tell you about the love of Jesus. Do you want me to tell you where he's, what he's done to me, what he let me go through? Do you want me to tell you about the times I tried to commit suicide and couldn't? Do you want me to tell you about the times I came close to death? The times I've been beat? The times, so many things. Uh, uh, raped at the age of 19 by a black man in the backseat of a yellow Cadillac at a high school party. My mom said I deserved it. You know, God, see, all these things you did to me, I don't know where I'm going to go in life. I don't know what you plan on doing. This woman ministered and ministered, and my sister-in-law started going to church. I couldn't believe the difference. Her children were talking about the devil and God and Jesus. And I said, you know, uh, I think she's in a cult. Because, you know, these kids are talking about the devil. Now, you know, churches don't talk about that. They just tell you stories about God. You know, they tell you Jesus died for you. He loves you. You know, Jesus died to save you. You know, I don't understand where they're coming from. And I remember her husband coming down and me looking him up and down saying, ooh, nice man. And she would look at me with embarrassment. I was stoned. I mean, this is what I knew. I looked at a man for one reason, to be held and have sex. That's all I knew. And he would tell me about the love of the Lord, and I thought, this guy has lost it. 
I mean, he told me about the things he did, and I thought, oh, yeah, Jesus can just bring you out of it in a magic moment, right? I knew about God. I went to a parochial school and church. I don't understand what you're talking about. When my sister-in-law started going to church, my brother quit drinking with me, and I knew something wasn't right now. I said, why aren't you having beer with me anymore? You don't smoke a joint with me no more. You don't, I mean, one cold brew on a Saturday afternoon, is that going to be hard? I don't know, sis. It's something, you know, we went to this church, and I've been going, you know, and I wish you'd go. I said, look, I tried getting you to go after Mom and Dad passed away. You wouldn't go. Well, but that's not like the church I go to now. I, this church, I mean, they clapped their hands. I said, oh, God. Clapping their hands. I suppose they danced, too. I said, Mike, let me tell you about this church. They're a cult. I've heard about them. And he said, but sis, I can't explain to you. Well, time went by, and he told me he was born again. I said, oh, God. I, get my brother out of this devil, born again, Jesus. Big change. <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, why don't you come to church, sis? I said, I don't know, because I'll tell you something about them people down the street. They've lost it, Mike. And I said, and then people talking about devil and being born again and filled with the Holy Spirit. I said, the Holy Spirit is only part of God. You know, he don't swoop down and suck into your body and make a change. He goes, well, he did with me. And I said, so that's why you're not drinking? I said, whose decision was this? You won't even have a beer with me. You won't even get high with me anymore. I said, I, this church that you're going to, have you checked it out? He goes, well... I've looked in the Bible, and I said, so what does it tell you? He said, you ever read the Bible? I said, well, in school, I know the Catechism and Ten Commandments, but Mike, the stuff you're hearing is not true. And he said, but it is. I'm going to show you John 3, 3. He whipped the pages over, I looked down at it, and I said, you must be born again to enter the kingdom of heaven. He said, are you going to heaven, sis? And I said, well, thought I was yesterday. I don't know about today now. And I said, I'll tell you, it scares the hell out of me to think about it. And he said, well, that's what we're supposed to scare out of you, sis. <laughs> I thought, you know, I don't know where you're getting all this. Well, then scripture and the Bible at the table when I'd come down. And I thought, you know, I just snorted. My nose, I had sinus surgery because of the cocaine. And my nose would bleed and, and just, I'm on a fifth a day of this smooth vodka. I don't even have to have ice anymore. I'm so good at it. But I'm feeling a need somewhere. And I said, you know... Maybe I'll go to church with you. Just see what this uh, devil and Jesus and spirit-filled stuff is. So I decided one Sunday, I had an all-night party, and, and it was close to going to church time, and I looked in the mirror and thought, I'm going to go to this church. Put a little makeup on and got dressed, and I called him up, and he said, oh, glory to God. And I said, oh, glory to God. I'm going to church. Aren't you happy? Because you don't drink beer with me. I'm going to check this out. And I was like turning 40. So I already planned suicide. I couldn't, there was no more drugs to take, no more alcohol, nobody else to sleep with that I could think of, nobody else to turn to that, I mean, there's got to be something else, and I'm going to check this out. I walked in, and he said, oh, good, Pastor Trim is preaching today. And I said, oh, glory to God. You know how they go, hallelujah, and all this? I sat there looking, and this guy was a cop, a, a detective on Grand Rapids Police Force. And he started preaching and oh they were up there jumping and clapping their hands I, said, I thought I was at a Pistons ball game for a minute you know no hoop on the wall but these people were jumping and I thought well they got something going and I'm looking naturally you know when you don't you don't know about Jesus Christ I guess you check things out because I knew about God in church and we always check that out but when we left we left God there so I watched these people and they were talking different <laughs> they call that prayer language and they had their hands in the air, just whooping it up, jumping on stage, and they were doing like rock and roll. I've never sang anything but out of hymnals. You know, Rock of Ages, Cleft for Me, or How Great Thou Art, but it was always reading, and when you got done reading, you folded the book, and you were done, and that was it. And I said, why are these people acting like this? And he said, because they're praising God, sis. They got a reason to act like this. I said, oh yeah, here we go. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I couldn't live that one. I mean, I had to say something about that. This is my brother, and I can't believe the change in him. I mean, he talked and smoked with me for years. We got drunk together, and he got in trouble all the time, and I don't have this companion. I have my bar full of friends. So the following Sunday, I know what the Spirit of God is now. The following Sunday, something just hit me and says, go to church. 
And I said, yeah, right. I mean, I got stoned the night before again. I mean, this was every day, every day. And Sunday was my day to start out with Bloody Marys about 8 o'clock, have people over, snort up and toke up, and then just finish your day out and get drunk because you didn't have to work. You know, I could think of excuses. I'm going to the beach, have a drink. John's coming over, have a drink. Uh, I have to go to the store, have a drink. Oh, so-and-so's calling us, sit down and have a drink. You know, something. I had to relax so I could get through the day. You know, you just, you make it another day and you're an alcoholic. I am not an alcoholic. Well, you have a disease. I don't have a disease. I just like to drink. I love getting loaded. That's not a disease. I mean, how many people inflict getting loaded on themselves? A lot. Is it a disease? You can call it that, but I don't know how many people give themselves a disease. I went to church and I stood there and watched this cop. Tell, and I know this was the spirit of God. Tell this story about when he was laying in bed drunk and all the things he would go through and the people he would deal with. Laying there drunk and this fan is spinning around and he's looking up and he's putting one foot on the floor to keep his composure and trying to get up and he's just so loaded he can't. And I thought, wow, <laughs> I just did that last night. This guy knows. I mean, he has to know. I just did this last night. Why is he talking about this? And so many things that he would deal with, with people on the streets, that he would take to jail, people he would see overdose, people he would say die, see die. And he just ministered. I mean, God knew. I can look back at it now. God knew that I needed that pastor, and he would only preach two Sundays, that I came to that church. I needed that man up there because he was what I remember in the world. You could kind of pay attention to what he was saying and understand. And I thought most preachers I knew was like, you, don't, you had to talk preacher talk to him, and I didn't know how to do that because I didn't know how to be churchy. You know, I don't know how to be a Christian. I just know how to be Ray. You know, I know about that. But I had something missing. He looked around and he said, uh, Holy Spirit's I said, oh God, Holy Spirit's talking to him again. Holy Spirit's telling me there's somebody in here that needs the Lord. I looked at my brother and I said, what's this guy, does, does he know that I don't know? Does he know that I'm not born again? He goes, I didn't say anything to him, sis. I said, oh, yeah, you did, because he's looking right at me. He said, he is not. I said, he is too. And he's going to want me to go up in front of all these people, and they're going to start going like throwing their hands on me. and do. I'm not going to go through that. Now, I'm telling you. So I just stood there, and he said, then you don't have to. I said, did you? He said, well, I cried. And I said, you cried? We're not allowed to cry, Mike. When did you cry? He said, well, when I got born again, I said, you did? You cry? I mean, like tears? I said, get out of here. Did that guy pray for you? And he said, yeah, he came up. And, and something just like a bolt of something came through me, and my legs started shaking, and I can remember my body going like this, and I thought, oh, God, he's going to come over here and say something. These people are going to whoop down on me and say, you're not born again, and just, I just know it. I just know it. Oh, God, don't let him do this to me. Don't let him do this to me. Service was almost over, and he just looked, and he said, if you want me to pray for you, raise your hand. Like that. I'm not going to get it up in the air, because they're going to come running down and do something. I know how these people are, because they're talking Jesus and the devil. I've never heard this, and I know they're weird. I'm not going to go through this. Yeah, okay, now let's go. My brother said, well, just a minute. The pastor come walking down. He looked at me, and he said, did you want me to pray for you? I said, well, I guess it's done, isn't it? I raised my hand. So I'm like, born again, right? And he just kind of smiled at me, and he said, did you want to be? Well, when he said that, he reached over to touch me, and it's just, I'm not used to being touched. <laughs> I pulled my hand back, and I said, don't touch me. I don't, you know, because I don't know if these people got something, you know. I don't know if they got, like, power or something. He may just lay hands and zap you or something. I don't know, because they're talking this Jesus and devil stuff. I don't, I'm scared of this. I don't know. <laughs> He just reached out like this, and you know what I did? Wrapped my arms around him and fell in his arms and held him, and I cried like a baby. Th that's not me. That's, you know, somebody's seen me weak now, and i got to be strong, and why am I crying, and why? And he said, just repeat after me a prayer. And I said, but I'm born again. I raised my hand, right? And he said, no, if you truly want, that's asking Jesus into your life, Ray. That's asking Jesus to be the Lord of your life. I said, but I know God, I'm, I'm a Christian. I mean, I went to church and I'm going to heaven. So he said, do you know you are? And I said, well, yeah, until I read that scripture that said you got to be born again. He said, do you want to get born again? And I said, well, yeah, I'm here. Right? <laughs> Might as well go through it now. You got a hold of me. 
And I thought, Lord, just don't let him zap nothing on me. I was just scared something, because you know, you're scared of the unknown. You don't know what's going to happen when you don't know Jesus Christ. You don't know the power of God. If you can smell a flower, there's power. If you can see a tree grow from a dead seed, there's power in God. If you can watch the ocean waves and see fish swim, there's power in God. If you can see it rain, there's power. God is powerful. And he's not going to swoop down on you and say, I'm God, here I am. You know, he, he gave us his son. When I said that prayer, I can't tell you what went through me. It, it was a new, you know, the old things are gone and there's new things. The Bible said you're, just, you're a new creation in Christ. And I thought, <laughs> this is what they were talking about, wasn't it? And this is the stuff I was scared of. I didn't know. I don't know about Jesus. I don't know. I mean, how do you act now? I mean, do you go blah, 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 like this, and, and, you, and you jump, and, you know. And I kept going to the bar, and I was still bartending. Um, an elite place, all these wealthy people would come in, and I remember them coming in going, check it out, man, I'm bored again, I'm bored again. And I'd throw the drink down, and they'd say, Ray, where have you been? And I said, I went to this church. You're not going to believe it. I mean, it's like, whew. I mean, something happened. I just can't explain it. Something happened. It's like, you know, it's like a, a, like a douche inside. It's like you're just clean and cleansed, and it's just awesome. It's just awesome. And they were, well, they, that's nice for you. Oh, that's nice, Ray. One customer gave me $500 and said, I'm so happy for you. You know, I go to so-and-so church out there, Ray, and you know that's wonderful. I said, but are you born again? He said, Ray, now what church are you going to? I said, oh, it's one of those, mm, you, you know, assembly of, you know. And he said, aren't they charismatic? And I said, I don't know. But, you know, when I, I said, I'm serious, man. You guys just, you don't understand. And I minister under all of these people at the bar. I went home and cried after about a week. I said, God, they don't understand. And my boss is saying, are you up there talking about Jesus? And I said, yeah. I said, oh, let me, let me tell you something. I said, let me just tell you what happened to me. Let me tell you about this jolt that went through me. I can't believe it. It's like, um, it's like peace and joy. I didn't have to pay for it, you know. And he said, well, oh, isn't that wonderful, Ray? And I said, oh, praise the Lord. And he goes, oh, yeah, praise the Lord. And I thought, didn't I just say that not too long ago? This is, I got to get this man saved. I got to, and I'm after everybody now. I'm after everybody. I want to, you know, the Bible said, taste and see that the Lord is good. And I want these people to taste. You know, I'm the one that made you drink for the last 10 years. I'm the one that ran my hind end off back and forth waiting on your hand and foot because you had money and you gave me the tips to live. But then I read something else that said, I'll supply all your needs. That's what God said. And you know what? I don't really need you now. I know what I need now. And, it, and <laughs> Lord, why did I go through what I went through for 40 years and didn't even know about this power? I mean, this backup man that you had named Jesus that died on a cross. I mean... I'm supposed to be the one hanging there. And I opened that book and read it from cover to cover. I couldn't believe the things that I read in there. I mean, in the book of Timothy, it says it's God breathed. You know, the Spirit of God breathed all of that Bible. They put it into these men that wrote these scriptures. I mean, these are promises that he made. These are things that he was saying to me. And I would come across it and... All of these years without the Holy Spirit. I, I, to this day, I don't understand it. God, how do you do it? I mean, you're a God that we can't see. And then you take your face and your spirit and breathe into a man named Jesus. He walks around for a few years and ministers and does healing and just tells people about salvation. And, and he's the one that's taken our place. And we're not grateful for it. We live in this world every day. And go about our business, flip on the tube and see everything happening in the world day after day after day. Where's Jesus in this picture? What about Jesus Christ? And you see, the church I went through and the school I went through, they never asked me that question. What about Jesus Christ? Because he's your main man. You know, he's your main man. There was a reason he went through what he went through. And when that hit my heart, I said, you know, Jesus, you were really real. And then I read that part in John where flesh and bone walked around and Thomas walked up and goes is that you and then he reached his hand out and there's a hole in his hands and feet Thomas backed up and really realized that was Jesus in body form resurrected and then when he goes up to heaven Jesus like disappears and now he's up there with God on the right hand and the Bible also tells you your ways aren't my ways your understanding's not my understanding I have a pea brain but I'm a child of the king now 
I belong to somebody, and I can't feel his arms around me only through others. There's people that I see that I can embrace and that I can love. And, you know, we still have, there's a human nature about us that God knows about. And I said, God, you know I can't change, but now i got to quit the drinking because I gave up the drugs. I laid three days in this room, overdosed on cocaine. This was Saturday afternoon, and then a, then a Tuesday came around, and I got up out of bed saying, uh, God, if you get me down off this, uh, I won't do it again. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to serve you, but I promise I won't do it again. It's like making deals with this God that created me. And you know, he brought me out of it. But I didn't really, re God was dealing with me then. <laughs> you know, hello, <laughs> this is God. <laughs> you know, what do we have to do here to get her attention? And I, I seen in that bar, God just showed me, and it was just like he took from my eyes, and now I could see spiritual. I can't, you can't explain it. You don't know how it happens. It's just like a bolt of something going through you, and it's called the Holy Spirit. And I said, Jesus, when you went up, you were so good to me that you sent me a comforter. You gave me that same spirit, check this out, that raised you from the dead, lives in me. <laughs> I've never had nobody give me nothing like this. I mean, this is, you know, no more you stuff. This is brand new. I'm a new person. So now, God... Um, Instead of asking you why, 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 you got to help me quit drinking because you see I still like my vodka martinis. I don't know how to, how am I going to do this? And then the scripture goes, it's not by might, it's not by power, it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. And I thought, saith the Lord. So that's what you said, right? Well, I'm going to believe you because there's this thing called faith that you got to kick in. You know, if you believe there's a God, then you believe God had a son, Jesus. Then you believe that Jesus was raised from the dead. And if you believe that, then you're going to believe that he sent his Holy Spirit. When you ask him, literally ask him to come inside and live, it happens. You don't see this big old lightning bolt shoot down, and you don't see somebody walk up and all these flashes, and, and it just enters in. He's a comforter. I mean, God is gentle. You know, he's not forceful. If you don't want him, you don't have to have him. But he's there, and there for the asking. Honey, you'll never be the same. I can't believe the change that, I said, God, I have to quit this, and God, I have to quit that, and I have to, you know, the man I was having an affair with at the time was married and from Canada, and every time he'd come in, we'd have our affair. I cut down to one man. I thought, Lord, this is kind of nice. The day I got born again, something told me, you don't do that no more. And I looked at him, and I said, uh, my body's a temple of the Holy Spirit. Ooh, Ray, what happened to you? I said, man, I'm born again. <laughs> I mean, this, let me, oh, I just got to tell you what happened. And, you know, I can't, that King James Version and me just didn't get it. And somebody bought me this book called uh, The People's Study Bible or something. It's like a living, it's in English. And I opened it up and it like told me things I could understand, you know. And I went and bought him one. And I thought, instead of having sex, we'll have worship. So I went to the motel with this Bible, and he said, uh, well, Rick, you know, he quit drinking. And, and I walked in, he looked at me, and he patted his hand on the bed, and I sat down and I said, I got something for you. He said, you do, honey. I said, oh, baby, I do. <laughs> I whipped out this Bible, and he said, what's that? I said, it's a Bible. I'm going to get you born again. <laughs> he said, Ray, are you all right? You've been drinking? I said, no, I haven't been drinking. But I said, I'm going to get you born again. I, I got to get you born again. You know what I'm saying? Because you got to get back with your wife, and I can't be sleeping with you no more. He said, oh, I got a hold of you. And I said, though, Holy Spirit. I said, oh, honey, I'm not the same here. This is not the same way you knew two weeks ago. He opened up the Bible. This was wonderful, because the second time he came in town, he had read it. He opened that Bible up as we sat on the bed side by side that we'd made love in so many times. And just read that Bible and looked at me, and tears rolled down his face. And he said, uh, you're not the same, Ray. Something different about your eyes. I said, they're the windows to your soul. Look inside. The Holy Spirit's in here, honey. I said, isn't that nice? He said, uh, it's different. But you know, my religion, I said, oh, no, we ain't talking religion. I'm talking Jesus stuff. You know, you got your religion. I said, if you want to hold on to that religion, hold on to it. Because you're going to take it all the way to the bank. I'm talking Jesus Christ, the real thing. You know, coke ain't real. Jesus is the real thing. 
couple weeks went by and he came back into town. He came over with his car. We went out. We did Bible study again, asking questions. He said, Ray, I haven't read a Bible like this before. I said, it's a study Bible. It just, it comes more clear because the theeth and the thoueth that ain't goeth no whereeth, you know, and, and I knoweth that I'm a goeth to heaven. And I said, and the people study Bible said, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you're going to be saved. And you know, God's not a liar. Let every man be a liar, the scripture says. God's not a liar. And if I can't believe in God, who can I believe in? I believed in man for a lot of years. Forty of them, I didn't get anywhere. I was given an empty tomb. I had nothing inside. And he came and filled it. He came and filled it. And you know, he sat in the car with his arm around me, and he said, I want, to, I want what you got. Oh, I said, oh, glory to God. Now I'm saying it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I've lost it. I'm radical for Jesus now. I said, this is awesome. You want to pray with me? And he said, yeah. So I held his hand. I don't know how to pray a sinner's prayer. I didn't know what to say. I didn't. Do you want to just, I mean, I guess you just ask him into your heart. I can't remember what that preacher told me, but, and I was so excited. And I said, Lord, just don't let me say the wrong thing. I don't know. What if I say the wrong thing? And he thinks, oh, maybe she, I don't know. I opened my mouth and the Holy Spirit said it all. And he just looked at me and bawled and bawled and bawled. And I just praise God for that because it was weeks after that. He went back to his wife, uh, wrote me a nice letter. I heard from him once, and it's been probably two and a half years. I don't hear anything anymore. But I know his life has changed. I know. I just know. And I just, I just praise God for it. And I'm praying now, Lord, I got to get out of that. I got to get out of the bar business now. See, I, can't, I don't belong there no more. And these people all think I've lost it. I know I've lost it, but I know what direction I'm in, see. God says... This is Jesus. I am the way, and I know I was going the wrong way. I am the truth, and I've been lied to long enough, amen? And I am the life. And you see, I lived 40 years, and it wasn't life. And Jesus Christ came to give me life, me, Ray, life, and give it to you more abundantly. I thought, well, yeah, I'm going to give this a go. I'm going to give it all I can give it, because I gave 40 years to Satan, and there is a devil. You might not see him around, but uh, he's there. He'll have you do things. He'll have you watch things. He'll have you act certain ways. And then when you're done, you say, I don't even know why I did that. I know why you did it. Because you don't have that power of the Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit inside of you convicts you of these things. I'd sit at the bar and, and just tell these people. I mean, these are wealthy people about... The love, I wanted everybody to go to church with me. You've got to go to church. You've got to go to, I'm not saying church was the answer. I know who the answer is. But I want you, see, if you love somebody, you want to share something with them. I got it. I want to share this with you. I want to tell you about this love I've got. I, I don't feel the same inside. You know, I can remember when I was a foster parent when I was married and they took this little girl from me two, two weeks before the adoption was final. And, and you know, they're screaming out, God, why, 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 why? I had a little bit of love of a child I felt for a while. And then I said, Lord, no more kids. I can't stand them. I don't want nothing. And I just grew a hatred toward children. A lady came into the bar one day and handed me an application. And I'm, Lord, I got to get out of here. I can't. I'm hearing your name curse when everybody would say, you know, a name of Jesus Christ. It was in a cursing manner. But in such regular talk, they didn't even know they were saying Jesus' name. And I'm thinking, I can just picture Jesus running over going, oh, wait, they were cursing me. Whoops, you know, and then walking away. And then they would say God's name, and then they would damn somebody, and then God would go, oh, well, I guess, you know. We're saying the name, but not in the right attitude. And now I say, praise you, God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Th you know, it's there. All you got to do is ask it. And it's, it's, he, he gives it to you. And oh, he gives you so much more. A woman walked in and handed me an application for a job. And I thought, well, Lord, I guess, now if you're the Lord in my life, it means I got to follow you, okay? So, and I know I can't see you. So um, somehow let me know that you're going to get me out of here. I can't handle coming into this stuff every day. This booze flying everywhere and I'm just you know, flipping, I'm, and I'm putting these glasses in front of people, and I'm thinking, Lord, I don't want to give this to this person. And my boss is saying, Ray, they're starting to drink Coke at the bar. We cannot have this, okay? I mean, buck 50 to three, you know, and I'm going, come on, Herb, you don't need that. It's like, you know, well, Ray, I go to church. You know, I said, but, oh, no. You go to church. You don't know about having church. 
Now there's a difference, okay? Well, why don't you come to our church sometime? I said, honey, I'm scared I'd change it. Because you see, I got something in me that I've always had and I've done for the world. And this jumping, you know, I said, if I was black, I'd be on the street corner singing. I'd be bringing them to the Lord. Over. Come on, come on, shaking my tambourine. Come on. Let's, I want you to meet this Jesus man. I mean, when you got something good and you love somebody, you tell them about it. And when you love somebody, you say nice things to them. When you love somebody, you give. And that's what God did. He gave me his son. His son died in my place. Nobody's ever done that for me. When this woman handed me this application, I picked it up. I said, anything to get out of here. I started filling it out. It was for bus driving. School. 70 kids at a pill. I said, God, are you sure this is the right application? <laughs> I don't know if I can handle this or not. I filled it out and handed it to this girl. And I said, uh, well, do what you can to get me in. She said, oh, it pays so-and-so. And I thought, well, that's $3 more an hour. See, I'm trying to justify all these things. I don't know about, you know, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or begging bread, you know, this scripture. And I thought, well, Lord, if I'm yours, um, you're going to have to prove yourself to me because I know I can't see you in human form. You've got you to gotta get me out of here. A week later, I get a phone call, uh, interview. I said, God, you did. Ooh, glory to God. I said, I'm out of here. I just know I'm, I'm telling everybody. Oh, I'm just, I got this application and just, I went down there. He said, uh, so what do you, what do you do? I said, I bartend. He said, why do you think you should have a job bus driving? I said, because I'm born again. I said, are you a Christian? And he goes, oh God, one of these. And the other guy kind of looked, and I said, well, I was a foster parent, and I drove a, um, a van. I drove a big van, uh, delivered legs pantyhose. And he said, oh, so, so we have somebody that was a foster mother and drove a, a van. And I said, well, don't you think that's enough? And I'm born again. See, I can't get, I can't get used to this. I'm born again. I can't. This just, a, you know, I just, oh, there's somebody new in here. I can't believe it. It's Oh, it's good stuff. I can't tell you. It's just, mm, taste and see. I filled it out and they hired me. I got out of the bartending. I went into driving a school bus. I said, God, now I know, and I'm just, I can't get enough of this Bible. I mean, this spirit that's inside, I'm feeding him on a daily basis. I lightened up on the cookies a little, <laughs> and I started feeding on the word, and I couldn't believe the difference. My eyes would come across her, and I went, wow. I didn't know it said that. Oh, wow, I'm that. I mean, he's my father. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He owns all the silver, all the gold. I mean, my daddy's rich. Oh, and then it says, I go to prepare a place for you in my father's house. I mean, this is my father too. Our many mansions. And I thought, <laughs> praise you, Jesus. You're up there making a place for me. I know I'm going to heaven, and I know it's going to be an awesome log cabin in the sky. That's, I mean, oh, man. I mean, I've got all this to look forward to. And knowing beyond the shadow of a doubt, it's mine for the asking. I mean, what more could you want? And peace, I got peace, I got joy. And then I came along Galatians 5.22 where it told me the fruits of the Spirit. I said fruits of the Spirit. That's weird because I don't understand that. You know, everybody interprets the Bible different. And I read it out of my little green study Bible. And it said, see, there's uh, peace and joy. I said, well, I have those. And then love and patience. Oh, but God, I just, you know, I'm so used to beating the you-know-what out of everybody. I don't, I don't know if I can handle these kids. Lord, help me. I don't want to hurt nobody because I know how my temper was. And at the end of all that, it said self-control. And I said, but see, I don't have that. I'm used to just snapping a hold of somebody, ripping their head off and walking away. I don't, ooh, don't let me touch one of them kids like that, Lord. I got on that bus, and I picked up these kids, and I'm just freaking. I said, Lord... Lord, just surround your, and I read this somewhere in scripture. It was like Psalms 34, 8. Lord, surround your bus with my angels. Uh, don't let me beat these kids. Don't, uh, oh, God, just protect me. Don't let me smash this bus up. Pulled out of the lot. I smacked a mirror off. I said, oh, God. I pulled in there, and I'm going, uh, I just, I took a mirror off the bus. Oh, no problem. First day, everybody does that. I got out to pick up these kids, and I'm in this very, very extremely poor, they call it the ghetto side of town, um, I've had a knife drawn on me. I've had kids in the back of the bus have sex. I've had young kids threaten to kill one another. Uh, I can't believe, and I didn't really realize, you know, you hear and you listen and, and to the radio and, and you watch the news, but I knew everybody needed the Lord. I mean, everybody, these kids have never even heard of Jesus. 
I said, hey, do you guys go to church? I'm born again. Oh, God, here she goes. It's, uh, oh, that's fine, Miss Ray. That's wonderful. You're one of them Jesus people, aren't you? I said, but you're going to be too because you're riding Miss Ray's bus. Well, I got called in the office more than once. Um, can't sing religious songs. And I said, why? I mean, can I sing what I want to sing? I'm not singing about having sex and having babies and, and condoms and uh, street gangs and knifing and shooting and killing cops. I mean, it's, what's wrong with singing Jesus songs like Jesus loves me? Well, because there's separation of church and state. I said, yeah, but there's not separation from God and me. And my boss just looked at me and she said, Ray, you know, we, we know what you're like. <laughs> we all know you around here, but you've got to be careful. And I said, then I'm going to check with every one of the parents. Father, I want you to do this for me again. Show me favor. Three, every three and four-year-old child on that bus knew every song on that tape. Jesus loves me and praise the Lord and we're stomping the devil, David and Goliath and I like the Bible, I like the Bible, it's made a change in me, praise the Lord. And they would just have their little hands up, they'd watch me pray. And one little black boy looked at me and said, hey, Miss Ray, you praying in the spirit? And I said, yeah, how do you know about that? Oh, because me and my mama go to church sometime and I heard them people doing that. I said, do you have Jesus in your heart? He goes, no. And I said, do you want him in your heart? He said, yeah. And I said, do the rest of you guys want to know who Jesus is? Yes, yes. And I thought, well, this happens to be National Day of Prayer, so maybe, I mean, it's National Day of Prayer, right? So maybe like Abraham Lincoln's birthday, you can say something. So I said, well, on the tape, it tells you how to accept Jesus. Everyone, praise God, every one of those parents gave me the okay for it. So God showed me favor. I mean, this is the world we live in to where uh, don't talk about God. Don't talk about them spiritual things. You're in public. Oh, don't pray over there in the corner. They might see you. Oh, don't bring up the name of Jesus, honey. You know, somebody might think you're weird. But it's okay to sit in a bar and curse God. It's okay to get drunk. It's okay to see people laying in a corner on a street corner. I remember I was homeless at one time. And I can remember laying there and, and just watching the people go by, sleeping in the back of a car. I didn't even have a house. And I prayed for a home. And two days later, I didn't even have a job. And the Lord supplied a mobile home to me, and I even got a loan without a job. That's God. That's God. Uh, the years and years of rejection, I have a Jesus Christ that loves me, that has made a change in my life. And I watch these children. They want to play all the rap music there is. And when I plug it in and turn it on, say, do you realize? And these kids, they don't know God. I mean, we're being raised in a world. Jesus Christ isn't talked about in public. You don't tell them about the love of God. I would drop kids off, and I started buying breakfasts for them. I would bring lunches for them. Other drivers would say, Ray, you can't do that. Because these, I've seen something in these kids that i never seen before. This is me. I've I seen this in me. I've seen this little girl coming on that hasn't eaten. I've seen a father that, and I praise God I never went through this, but a father that would sleep with this little four-year-old. And I remember specifically this one little girl, and I said, God, I've got to see you again. I've got to see something in you that shows me the love of these kids. And this little girl got on in the dead winter with a little cotton skirt and a spring jacket. And I prayed. And I mean, I prayed and cried for that child for months. And I said, Lord, do you want me to adopt her? Do you want her to move in with me? Do you want me to do something for her? I don't know what to do. But see, I know, you know, I don't know how to pray either, you know. Well, this is how you pray. You talk to me. We have fellowship. We have a relationship. You ever had a boyfriend or a girlfriend? You have relationship. You share your feelings. And this is new for me, God, but uh, I'm praying that little girl get a pair of boots. Now, if I have to go by again, I will. But she needs a hat. She needs a scarf. She needs that father to quit sleeping with her, God. And I don't have control. I want to beat them. You know, and I, this self-control, praise God, the Holy Spirit's given me these fruits. I say, if you ever walk by a tree, the apple don't grow in a day. And I know these fruits have to grow on me. And I know, praise God, I'm getting better every day at a lot of things. A lot of things. And I'm not doing any of them on my own. I'm leaving it up to God. And he, if he is the way, then I'm going to follow that way. Because you see, when the Bible says he's got a plan on your life, I screwed it up for 40 years. 
And, I, and, and you know God deals with each and every one of us. We all in our heart have that knowledge. We know that God is real. And we push him away for everything the world has to offer. And when we get our fill of it, we don't know where to go. And there's cults and churches and, and drugs and alcohol and commercials on TV tell you this is a way to escape. This is a way to have fun. This is not how you have fun. Well, when I got that little girl to school, I pulled up and I said to this teacher whom I knew was spirit-filled, praise the Lord, come on into my bus for a minute. I'm going to pray over this child. We prayed and I said, God, I want to see a miracle today. Well, I started to pull away from my bus and these teachers, two of them, come running out, waving at my bus, come back, come back. And I pulled over and I went inside this school and they said, come here. And I walked over and this little girl was knelt down at this table. And that morning, about uh, half an hour before my bus came in, a woman that knits and crochets, that's a Christian, the Lord told her somebody needed something. And I walked up and this little girl was sitting there. She looked at me and she said, Miss Ray, look, I got a new scarf and I have new boots and I have mittens to keep my hands warm. And I said, God answered a prayer. And the principals didn't look at me in unbelief. And I said, I want you to know that you tease me about being born again and about knowing Jesus Christ. Well, I want you to know that a half an hour ago I prayed that this child would have boots, a mitten, gloves, and a hat. And praise God, she got a scarf too, and I didn't even ask for it. And I said, this child's never even had new. And I know that her father molests her day in and day out. I know what she goes through. And I can remember when I was little and always wanting something new and all I got was used and I got teased and rejected. She came over and she put her arms around me. And she said, Miss Ray, it's new stuff. And I said, Jesus is good because that's what Miss Ray prayed for for you. She goes, really? I said, really? I said, see, Jesus loves you, sweetheart. She said, oh, Miss Ray, this is the happiest day of my life. Teachers, even the ones that weren't, religious, weren't born again, weren't spirit-filled, stood around and cried around that child. And I said, I want you to know that this is the love of God. And I don't care how much you tease me. I know that love. I was 40 years without it, and I'm going to give 40 years with it. I'm going to take all God's got for me because he's a father I never had. He's a giver. You know, he's a gift. He gave me the gift of life. He gave me the gift of his son. He gives me spiritual gifts. He gives me friends. He gives me people to love, people to love me back. He gives me those children to show me how to love people back. I was never able to do that. I see these kids, and they called me the Pied Piper at the bus station. These kids come up and always, like, go to school. Let's get into school. Oh, but Miss Ray, we want a hug. Oh, Miss Ray, I have an owie. Come pray for it. Oh, Miss Ray, I don't feel good today. Will you pray for me? I will. And you know, God always answers my prayer. Maybe not in my time. It's like, God, I want this prayer answered today. You know, I, I just, I'm lonely, God. I need some friends. And when I was first born again, my friend of seven years died of AIDS, and I watched him die within a three month. I'm only three months old in the Lord. I said, David, you got to have Jesus Christ in your life. You're dying, honey. You chose homosexuality, and you're dying because of it. Ask him to come in. Get away from me, Ray, okay, because you're losing it. You no, no, no. We've been best friends for seven years. I want you to know because I don't want you to die and go to hell and then say, oops, Lord, I made a mistake. Because once you're there, Jesus is going to have to turn away from you. I don't know you. You know, he don't want you lukewarm. He don't want you one way or the other way, tossing this way and that way. Ask him into your heart. He had a minister come and pray for him, and he told me he accepted Jesus Christ. I just pray he does. My best friend of 21 years moved to Florida. My friend of 10 years moved away. A guy that I dated, I tried to get him to accept the Lord. and He got married, and he used to come and want to have affairs with me, and I did up until I accepted the Lord. I said, you got to meet the Lord. Steve, you got to know who he is. But maybe some other time, Ray. i got too much life to live now. I said, but you don't, but you don't. And he said, you know, you're off into this. I don't know what you're off into, but I can't get into it. You know, you've always kind of, you've always believed in God. So what are you doing now? I said, but it's Jesus, Steve. You've got to meet him. 
Two weeks later, he was killed in a plane crash. Every person that had a strong influence on my life, God removed from my life. Uh, three friends died and four of them moved away. And then I started crying at night going, God, I don't have any friends. And I don't know about these religious people because you see, I don't want to say a lot to them. I don't want them to know how I am inside. I don't want them to know me. You know, how many people can you walk up to and tell your life, like I'm talking tonight? How many people can you let know about your past? These are things that have been hidden for years. You know, and if I told you, you probably wouldn't believe it. But I'm telling you now what Jesus Christ has done. He's the one that made the change. God knows I tried. I tried everything in the book. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I thought, wow, I got extra strength. This, this, is, this is a boost, you know. Jesus Christ is there to help me, to get me through this. But now, God, I need friends. I don't know who to go to. I don't know who to talk. I don't want to. And there were a few people in this church I was going to that I found out weren't really Christians. Why are you sitting at the bar drinking all the time if you're spirit-filled? Why do you want to be around that? I mean, when I was around it, I tried to let these people know what Jesus Christ done. I wanted to see the change in their life. I want, I want you to have what I have. You know, this joy and this peace comes along with it, but let Jesus Christ make a change. And, uh, well, it's just only a cocktail now and then. It's only, I mean, I have a joint once a month. I mean, it's not going to hurt you. But I looked at 40 years and I seen what it did to me. It hurt me. It hurt me to the point I wanted to kill myself. So why are you going to give Satan lead way with one little thing? I want all you got for me, Jesus. I don't want a little bit. I want it all. And help me when I fall. But Lord, give me a friend. I can't keep going like this because I feel this strong urge to keep going back to this bar. I want to go back because these are the people I can relate to. This is all I've ever known. I went back to the bar and I sat there and I never seen what I seen that day. I looked around and seen all these people Bumping into walls, blind. There are none, the Bible says, none so blind than those who will not see. You know, and that's, that's a choice you have to make. Life is a choice. Jesus Christ is a choice. You don't have to make it. But you know he's going to keep trying with you. And you've got a lot of people praying for you. And I had a woman in that church. I said, I can't quit the smoking now. See, God, I'm no good, God. I'm no good. I can't, I can't give up cigarettes. I'm hooked. You know, and I still want this drink. Uh, the cocaine don't bother me. The drugs are gone, but I can't give up the cigarette. Why not? I said, because I can't. And this woman said, sweetheart, don't worry about it. <sighs> I said, don't worry about it. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm down to half a pack a day. This is great. But then, you know, two months later, I'm down to three cigarettes a day. Great. I'm still smoking three cigarettes. I'm still sucking it in. I'm blowing it out, sucking it in. I stood in front of the mirror. <laughs> and I'm watching myself going, you look stupid. I mean, why don't you just go suck on a tailpipe? You know, I mean, you'd look stupid, but you're still sucking it in, blowing it out, sucking it in, blowing it out. But I can't get rid of it. She said, but I can do all things in Christ that strengthens me. I said, but I ask him, and it's not going away. She said, then you make the choice, sweetie, it will. This woman prayed for me, and I'd call her up, and I said, oh, no, I said a cuss word. I cursed. I mean, I said a I didn't curse God, but I said that word, you know. Oh, I fell on my face in the hallway screaming and crying. I got mad. I ripped the door off the hinge today. I threw, I'm trying to paint my house and now, I mean, my anger's not leaving. How come? How come? It's a fruit of the Spirit, sweetheart. And I thought, how can this woman be so peaceful? I'm like a wild woman. God, why am I not changing? Why am I not changing? I want this change overnight. I, I got to change, God. I got to change. You know, and this gentle voice said, you are in my time. You're going to have to tell somebody about me someday. And, I, you know, it's not a miraculous, boom, you're changed. The Holy Spirit's a comforter, and he does it in a soft way. Well, I cried on this woman's shoulder more than once. And she just said, you know something, sweetheart? I'll be the mama that you never had. And I said, God, boy, you a giver. You know, now you get, you know, I'm going to have a friend now. And now I've got a mother I never had. And this woman loves the Lord. And I was kind of skeptical, and I thought, I stood back and watched her for a good six, seven months. And then they said, you're going to be in a Christmas play. And I went, <laughs> oh, no, I'm not. I'm not going to. No, no, no. And I watched this woman get up and scream these obscenities in midair of a person that would say, Jesus, come on down off this cross. You're gonna. She couldn't hardly say it. And I said, why don't you? 
She said, I can't, that's my God. And I thought, wow, my God. I mean, she must love him. You know, this is a real relationship you have, isn't it? She said, he is real, sweetheart. It's just going to, and she called me sweetheart. And I used to sit and cry and look at her and I'd say, God, I never had anybody care. I mean, like she hugs me breast to breast. I thought women aren't supposed to do this. My mom said, don't touch me. Why is this woman hugging me? I hope she's not queer. I didn't know. I mean, I'm scared. I don't know because this is all new. Well, year after year, and then, I mean, I know her, and it's, this is love. This woman told me, I've got a daughter that's, that I'm just trying to get to the Lord that backslid. And I really believe, and I thought, oh, no, she's getting messages from the Holy Spirit. Well, I believe that you're in the church to help my daughter. And I thought, me? God, you're going to use me? I don't know what to, I mean, I'm not worth nothing. I mean, I can't, but then I've seen changes in these kids. And then I met her daughter. <laughs> well, <laughs> there was a change in her daughter. And I said, well, God, I guess you did use me. And you know, I thank you for it. You know, it's been three years since I've been born again. And I just, I can't tell you, you know, if you haven't tried Jesus, sh shoot up with him once. Because you'll have a high that never goes down. I'm not saying that you don't have troubles. I'm not saying you don't have problems in the world, but I got somebody to turn to. And he's supernatural. He's supernatural. And you know, on my bus, I have this seed from an apple. You know, I don't hear audible voices, but you know when the Spirit of God speaks. It's inside kind of stuff. You know, you know when God's speaking to you. And I spit this seed out in my hand from an apple and went, wow, a seed. I was a seed once. Wow, and then I read this scripture. I was knit together in my mom's womb. I mean, like God's knitting me in a womb. The veins went in here. The eyeballs were here. The little hands and stuff. And they say it's a gob of tissue. Well, if it's a gob of tissue, let it get a bigger tissue. Don't be taking this out. I remember experiencing that abortion. When I looked at parts, I seen an arm on the floor. I seen parts of you know, features of this baby laying on the floor, and I know this is real. This, you know, and if they're doing this, you know, it says Satan's the father of lies. I've been lied to long enough, and I'm, I'm pretty hip to his little lies now. I pretty well know, you know, I, I slip up now and then, but the Bible says I'm blood covered. That means that blood that Jesus shed, I'm covered in it. So when I go, God, I goofed up. Um, will you forgive me? Yes. <laughs> and I'm forgiven. It's, it's wonderful. And then the scripture says, as far as the east is from the west, well, on a good day, look at the east and look at the west. And that's how far your sins are removed. All of my sins. I'm white as snow. I said, this is awesome, God. I'm a born-again virgin. Isn't that wonderful? I've never experienced anything to be so brand new in my life as Jesus Christ. There's, there's not a whole lot more to say. But he's made a change in my life, and I'm not going to quit talking about it. And if I could be as radical for music and be the dancer I was and give out all that love for nothing, and God gives me a whole new set of friends and gave me his son, Jesus Christ, there's nothing more you can ask for. Because I'm just standing back now watching this plan that he has for my life. I can... <laughs> I look back at three years and I can't believe this is me standing here talking on a video running, knowing it's going to be shown on television. They're going to go, isn't that Ray? Oh my God, what is she doing at a church talking? I got a song to sing the angels can't sing. It is the most, What if you've never tried it, I mean we all try. You know, before you ate chocolate, you tried it, didn't you? Did you taste it? People told you it was good and you tasted it. And it is good. And God says in the Bible, taste and see that the Lord is good. I'm asking you to try it. I'm asking you not to miss out on what life is really about. Because if you do, I don't want to say you're going to go to hell if you don't. But you're going to go somewhere and it's not going to be heaven. And in John, 1 John, I think it's 3, 2, it says, I will see him face to face. This is my Savior. I mean, my personal Savior I'm going to see him face to face one of these days. And he calls me his child. And I'm going to be like him. I'm going to have a resurrected body and I'm going to live with him forever. 
And forever is a lot longer than maybe the 70 years that you're given here on earth. And how much can you do in 70 years? I'm asking God that I can just do until the Lord comes and takes me home. I want to do for him. I can't do for him half that he done for me. And you know, I'm not allowed to cry in front of people, but I can cry in front of you and tell you that he is real. He is so real if you have never, ever asked him in. I'm not saying fall on your knees and scream, and I'm not telling you to get wacky and just ask him in. And you know, I mean, we all know in our heart that's what we need. It's a need we have. We are born with that need. Jesus, just come into my heart. Show me the difference. And he's a show me God. He will come in and he will show you beyond the shadow of a doubt, beyond the shadow of a doubt, I'm going to heaven. I am going, I have eternal life with the man that died for me. I have streets of gold, a crystal sea, a family forever, a Jesus that loves me, friends and love. I mean, I want you to look around the world and see what people do for love. I want you to listen to today's music and it's singing about love. We're starving. We are a nation that starves for love. And Satan gives you everything. Every movie you watch, it seems he, he's sliding in. Commercials. You see a woman's breast on a Coke commercial. You, you watch a candy commercial. You watch beer. Everything's joy and love. Show me that. Show me that through that can of beer, the love that you got. Let me see you when you go home and you're laying in that bed crying, searching for something, going, God, why? I know you are. I know a lot of you sitting out there are just, are you doing the same thing? Because we're all made up of the same thing. We all have a heart. And the Bible says God is love. And if you want to know what true love is, then you get to know God. Because God filled that empty spot in me. And I'm not the same. And praise God, I'm not the same. I'm not searching anymore. I know where it comes from. And I goof up a lot. But I got a God that forgives me. Totally forgives me. He has washed me white as snow. And if you believe there's a God and don't know about Jesus Christ, ask him in. And you read the scripture and he'll make the scripture real. You'll see and read things you've never seen. You will feel things you've never felt. When you see a flower, you're going to go, wow, my dad made that. You know, when, when you see the sun set, you're going to go, he's the man with a brush in his hand that painted that for me. I mean, what a gift. You can't open that. You know, I think of the Christmases that I had, and I would crawl under that tree, and I'd look at my mother with this hate and go, I hate you. Why did you? And I'd look at this little flat pile with maybe a pair of socks and underwear, and I'd look at my brother's pile and I'd go but I want a gift I want somebody to give me something daddy why does mom do that I don't know hon that's just the way she is why do you mother why do you do this to me because you got to get tough in this world Ray you got to get tough the entire family all of her relatives used to feel sorry for me poor Ray never gets any hugs and kisses and I can remember one aunt that used to hug me that has nothing to do with me now because I'm born again you know, and I looked at her one day and I said, you know, you're, are you born again? Well, honey, just now, I don't know what you're into, but, you know, it hasn't spoke to me since. That's too bad because I want her to know the love of Jesus Christ. I, I think about those Christmases when all this sympathy and have pity on poor Ray, look what she got. The used ice skates that were painted white, the blades were rusted on. I got out there proud as a peacock to have them. I remember this old radio that I got. They, they didn't feel like a gift. I didn't know what a gift was. I was never given anything. But I always wanted to see people pleased and happy so I would give. You know, let me give this and I'll give. And then see, I've made somebody happy. God, am I doing good now? You know, I didn't know the love of Jesus Christ. That's what I needed. All these gifts that I got, and none of them I ever, were ever wrapped. They were just laying in a little pile. And I knew the junk pile, that was mine. Radio, why did I get the grandpa's old used radio? Because you've got to get tough in this world. You're going to face this world one day, Ray. You've got to be tough. Not everything's going to be given to you. But why did they get new radios? Those are my brothers. Why did they get new? I want to kill my brother again. Well, God gave me Jesus Christ. He made me new. That was a new thing. No bows, no ribbons, no paper. And at Christmas time this year, my church asked me, 
to get up and give my testimony. My whole body shook. I said, I can't just, I never talked about that abortion. And I know now why I drank like I did. I never mentioned, don't talk about the hate that you had for people. Don't talk about how many men you slept with. But see, this is reality. We all, if you live anything in the world like I did, we all do it. You may not talk about it, but it's there. It's a knife that stabs you, you know. Satan's a liar, and the Bible says he comes to steal. That means take from you what you deserve. You deserve Jesus Christ. You deserve a new start. You deserve a new life because he's there to give you that life. He's there to steal it. And if you let him steal it, he's going to take you. He said, the scripture says he's a father of lies. He's going to lie to you every step of the way. He's going to do anything he can to get you and keep you. He's, he's not kind. And uh, I think he knows the end of the book. <laughs> so he knows his time isn't long. And I just urge you today, I, I'm going to end this now. And I just urge you today, if you have never had a, a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, or maybe you go to a church and maybe you know God, and just believe there's a God. Well, let me tell you, he didn't plop the earth down in the middle of this atmosphere, spin it and walk off and say, now it's up to you. Because God is really there. And God has given his son, Jesus Christ. I'm urging you, if you haven't asked him into your heart, if you have any idea what he can do, I, I just, I can't stress enough. You sit and listen to my testimony tonight. And there's a reason you're watching this. There's a reason you're watching me. And there's a lot of you that are going to know who I am and can't believe I'm up here saying this. And I'm not embarrassed. This is for the glory of God, not for the glory of me, not for the glory of Ray. And the hardest thing I ever done was get up. My, my body isn't even shaking anymore. And at church, my whole body shook. And I thought, I'm going to tell these people about all of these things that happen, God. What if I goof? You don't goof with God. You ask for forgiveness. And he will forgive you. I urge you. Ask Jesus Christ into your heart and just watch what he does. You don't have to do anything. Ask him to forgive you. Tell him that you believe in the son. Tell him, just tell him that you need him. Because he knows ahead of time what you need. And he's there to give it to you. I just pray to God that by the power of his Holy Spirit, that he touches your heart and you accept him as your savior. And get into a church that's full gospel that can let you know about his love and tell you about the gifts. That he